Hello again YouTube and I'm back with another uh, video and in this video here I show you that I am actually replacing my car battery uh, with this 3D printed capacitor boost box that I that I had made and with into the shape of the battery if you look down here you can see those little indentations and down here so what I did is I had uh, you know I took this battery in and the uh, 3D printer, uh, the guy, the architect, he kind of uh, measured this exactly and we came to a similar, created a similar box uh, that will fit inside of the car. And so essentially, I just took laser savers I did, kind of took it to the next step and created my own little boost pack. Here we have vents on the top for uh, uh, venting out any type of hot air. And I got two holes here where I'm going to put the uh, my little post. Uh, to wire it into the car. So essentially, I'm going to replace <laughs> this with that. This battery here is is just it's going on five years old, so it was due uh, for replacement. I mean, it's just dead. It just you can it doesn't hold the charge. It's you know it stays at like 10 volts, so it's probably a shorted cell. And this thing is like ultra heavy. I mean, well, it's heavy like a battery would be. And this thing, in comparison, is incredibly light. So I'm going to uh, kind of stop the video and I'll come back and I'll show you what the finished uh, product looks like. Again, this right here, I got my capacitors in there, I got my terminals, and I'm going to, uh, you know, connect them up. Okay, and you can see I have the uh, balance circuits here. I'm waiting on another one uh, to come in the mail. I had three originally and I shorted out one. Uh, for some reason, maybe it was defective or just, you know, I didn't do it right or something. But in any case, this is all my capacitors and they've been working very well. Okay, stand by YouTube. Okay, YouTube, and as you can see, I've wired up the box um, and that's what it looks like. Uh, you see the positive and negative posts and just similar positive and negative posts. Um, and you can see the shape. Doesn't look too bad. Eh, it's not perfect, but it definitely doesn't look too bad. Okay, and the next step is to mount it in the vehicle. Okay, one moment. Okay, YouTube, I'm back, and I have mounted uh, the battery, or I'm sorry, the ultra my boost cell um, into the into the car. I've mounted the. Uh, the terminals as you can see and I've got my multimeter here because I'm going to I've got to charge it up now I'm going to use this Stanley boost uh, box here it, I've discovered that it does have its uses as far as charging up the capacitor bank it won't start a car worth anything but it, it does have its uses and uh, there is a 12 volt battery on the inside of this thing so uh, so I've mounted it in the car and so I'm going to charge it up by simply connecting up the uh, the cables uh, to the uh, you know to their respective posts, positive and negative, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this on for three second, like in three second bursts, just like if I was uh, starting the car. So you know I'm going to turn it on, thousand one, two, three, and then stop, and that tells me that okay, so it's charged up to three volts. Now, I've, after testing this thing, um, I have driven this capacitor bank, uh, you know, without the box, just basically the, capaci ca the uh, capacitors connected in series. Um, and I drove the, this, uh, we recently had a, uh, unfortunately we had a, a funeral, a death in the family, and I had to drive 15 hours uh, to get to the, uh, uh, the place where the funeral was gonna be held. And the thing is, we drove 15 hours uh, with no battery. Uh, I do have that little battery in the back, uh, just in case. Uh, but we drove for 15 hours straight, 15 hours straight, okay? And then, you know, there was the weekend, and we drove around, and then we had to drive 15 hours back. And this thing worked. It worked great. There was only one little time when we stopped at a gas station, and, and um, you know, uh, my wife, was, she turned on the radio, um, without starting the car, she didn't know that you know that <laughs> how these things work. So I had to explain it to her. But I had this thing, and you know, we just simply, I just simply recharged it in the method that I'm showing you now. But anyway, this this thing ran for like 15, I mean, 15 hours straight. 
So I'm at 3.08 volts. So I'm gonna turn this thing on for, again, about three seconds. One, two, three, turn it off. And now I'm at 4.98 volts. Now, through testing, I have discovered that all I need is nine volts to start my vehicle, just nine volts. So I'm just gonna get to nine volts and stop. So I'll do this again. So this just doesn't, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't charge it too quickly. So as you can see, I'm at, not at six volts. So a couple more turns and I'll be, uh, be done. So one, two, three. And as you can see, I'm at seven volts. Okay, so let's do it again. One, two, three. Okay, 7.8 volts. One, two, three. Okay, 8.7 volts. One, two, three. And you can, you know, probably leave it on longer if you wanted to. Okay, now as you can see, it's at 9.3 volts. So I'm gonna jump in the car. It's at 9.3 volts. And you can see my little meter here, it's at nine volts, and I'm gonna try to start the car. And it starts fine. So at nine volts, you're good to go. So it's slowly climbing, it's slowly charging from the alternator. Well, not slowly charging, it's fast charging. Okay, almost 12 volts, and I'll just leave that on until it reaches about around 13.8 or 14 volts. And as you can see again, this is my little uh, 3D printed battery box that I had custom made. And essentially it's just, it's a replica of that thing. So as you can see, 13.8, okay, 13.9, 14 volts. And it'll just kind of fluctuate here, 14.1, maybe 14.2. Now, I'm gonna replenish the power coming into this thing by just simply turning it on and letting it charge up that, this little jump box. This is just for emergencies. Now, I've also discovered that the car, um, if, if sitting overnight, it will still start up uh, in the morning. There's, you know, I'll, I'll turn the car and the voltage will be down to like 12 volts. I will turn it off at like maybe 14 volts and in the morning I'll come out and it'll be like 12.5, 12 point something, 12.7, between 12.5, 12.7 12 maybe, uh, you know, it'll be hovering around there. So it's no big deal. And you saw earlier when I just started the car that all I need is 9 volts uh, to start the car. And at 9 volts that's no big deal. So I'm going to put the, uh, you know, the, uh, the cover back on here on top and then that will be, you know, that will be that. Okay, so we're at 14.6 volts. I'm going to turn this thing off and just simply take out my multimeter leads. Okay, set this over here and take off these leads. Okay, okay I'm going to pause the video because it's kind of hard to do this with one hand. Okay, YouTube, but I'm back, and this is what it looks like without the breather. This is to the air box, and I need to put that little thing back on there. But uh, this is what it looks like without it. It's on there, nice and firm. Okay, okay. and uh, you see the little holes there. Okay, and I'm going to pause the video again and show you the completed work. Okay, YouTube, and now you can see the completed work. You see the breather or the air tube here uh, going to the air box, and you know everything is in place. I had this the uh, the color. I kept it green. Uh, the, you know I just wanted something different because you know hey think of it as you know a green cell. Uh, you know for environmentally friendly and stuff like that. Um, I could have chose different colors, but I, I chose green. So so the finished product is a actual battery replacement. Okay, this is my okay. Uh, Maxwell has what they call an engine start module. Their box is blue. And so, as a, you know, and there's some other uh, manufacturers, they have these little uh, battery boost modules or power boost modules. And um, mine, I'm just going to call mine the car start module. Okay, yes, that's cheesy, 
Uh, but hey, you know, I don't want to get, you know, deal with copyrights and stuff like that. So, anyway, this is my car start module. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah, okay. If you're going to comment, please be kind. All right. But anyway, uh, so essentially, you see that I have replaced that bulky thing, this battery. Yes, batteries still have a purpose. Yes, with this. And it runs fine. And I, as I said before, we ran this thing. I ran it. I drove for 15 hours straight. Uh, it was hot over the weekend, very hot. And so I drove for 15 hours straight, and you know, to one, you know, one way, and then drove throughout the weekend. You know, I drove from one, you know, between three states uh, over the weekend, and then drove back. You know, uh, for you know. Uh, 1,500 miles, uh, not 1,500 miles, but uh, 15 hours. So these things do work, and you've seen them on the on the uh, on YouTube, and other people doing it and so forth. So, I mean, hey, this thing works great. Um, again, I don't know how sturdy this box is going to be, um, but you know, I've been assured that you know the material is okay. But again, if anything, this is revision number one. Okay. All right. Take care, YouTube, and. Uh, I'll be seeing you. Hello again, YouTube. And I'm back with this, just another uh, uh, informational message here. Uh, one thing that I want to mention. This was not cheap to do. I mean, the uh, ultra capacitors cost about 44 bucks a piece, if, depending on where you go to get them. Uh, sometimes, and that was the cheapest I had found with the Maxwell, you know, ultra capacitors that I have. Um, and you know, some actually there are some others that are, in some places they charge you know uh, way more. Uh, but anyway, also there was the cost of the 3D printing. There's the cost of the individual to use the uh, software to draw the box for the 3D printer, uh, which is called CAD or uh, computer aided design. And um, and you know, so you had the CAD drawing, and then you had the actual printing of the box itself. And the total cost with the capacitors and the printing, I mean. You can, you know, with that type of cost, you can buy you can buy cheap batteries from Walmart, you know, maybe three or four, maybe four or five. Uh, but you see, the key thing is, this right here will last, you know, you know, hundreds of thousands, if not mi millions, of cycles. So this thing, you know, these ultra capacitors that are inside of that box should outlast me, uh, just like nickel-ion batteries. They should outlast me if you if you go do your research on the internet. And it doesn't really, it, these things, you know, let's say, for instance, they did discharge because you left, you were at the airport or something like that, and they, they uh, you know, they kind of slowly discharge. Well, the bottom line is you can actually charge these things up quickly with a solar panel. I got a 5-watt solar panel, and I can charge these things up in no time flat. So I'm not really worried about that. And plus, with that extra battery boost box, you know, I can charge them up really quick. So the idea here is, do you, if... You know, you can continue to buy lead acid batteries. They work fine. They are, you know, the technology is uh, well well understood. They've been around for hundreds of years, I, I think. Um, but the bottom line is, um, I mean, well, they've been around for a long time. I don't know how long they have, but I know they've been around for a very, very long time. So the point that I'm trying to make is, you know, yeah, you can, you know, you can buy, you can take the money that you would spend to produce something like this or buy something like this commercially, um, or, you know, the same money that you use to do to buy something like this or to make something like this, you can buy, you know, four or five of those. So the key thing here with this is the fact that, you know, I can always, this thing, I can charge this up really quick and I will never have, it's, you know, uh, you know, depending on how this thing works out, theoretically, I should never have to buy another battery, another car battery again, for the life of this vehicle. And if, if the vehicle, you know, if I have to trade this vehicle in for whatever reason and get another one, I just transfer the battery over. So, you know, with this right here, you always have to keep, you know, this that is a item that wears out, and it's just like clockwork. Around four, you know, at four years or five years, the thing dies. Uh, just like clockwork, it's manufactured to fail. Uh, but this right here, no, nah, no, this is not manufactured to fail. This is manufactured to last, okay? But anyway, just wanted to throw that out uh, to you. If you want to find out how much this uh, a, a boost pack costs, you can do some research on the Internet, and you can look for power boost packs, ultra capacitor boost packs. Um, Maxwell has them. Maxwell capacitor, uh, they have them. 
and they are not cheap, and they are not cheap for a reason. Okay. All right. Just wanted to throw that out there, YouTube. Take care.